Want to learn how to build simple structures that still look awesome? Hey everyone, my name is Smitty and today I'm going to show you a design style that is both easy and looks great. This is a theme that I implemented in my most recent City of Edoras project, but today I'll show step by step how you can implement this style yourselves. Hope you all enjoy, and without further ado, grab a snack, grab a drink, let's get right into it. Alright, so this theme looks really great for simple rustic structures, which is why it fits so well into the Edoras project. It's not a hard one to execute, but there are some nuances to certain parts, so just follow along and it should make sense. Alright, so step one is the foundation. So we're going to determine the shape of our structure with this. I'm going to use the stone floor just to outline just a simple shape here. So maybe I'll go four across here, bring it in a little bit. Maybe we'll create kind of an L here. I think I want this to be five across here. Okay, so here's the shape of our foundation. It's not too complex. It's really just like a five by eight section and then a two by four that hangs off of it just to make it not as one dimensional. But from here, I'm actually gonna dress this up a little bit or trim it with the stone walls. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line this real quick all the way around. All right, and with that, the foundation is complete. So I like adding the stone walls here on the outside just because it'll look nice when the building actually sits right on the inside on the stone floors. So this trim just adds a little bit more detail. All right, so step two is gonna be placing in our structural beam. So we wanna build out the framework of the building itself. I'm gonna start out with the wood poles. I know that I want it to be four meters up to the roof line. So in each one of these corners, I'm going to go ahead and place in these wood poles. I'm also going to place in some poles here on the back side just to stay in line with the poles that are in the front. And then again on the corners here. All right, so we have our structural poles in. Typically, I would connect these with cross beams, but in this specific design, I'm not going to do that because I don't want the cross beams to show through the thatch roof that's going to go on top. With that being said, what we're actually going to move on to working on is the roof lines of the faces of our building. So we have a face here, a face here, on the other side, and then maybe we could also do a, a different face on this side. Okay, so when working on these roof lines, you got to make sure that they don't sit flat to the walls. So we're going to use the 45 degree beams, but if we just put them there, that's gonna sit flat to this wall, and it's gonna sit flat to this wall. And that's not gonna look quite as nice. So what we wanna do instead is create a snapping point that's gonna be somewhere in this area that just adds a little bit of relief and overhang to our roof. So I'm gonna take the one meter pole, create a snapping point right in the middle of this beam, and then bridge it out right here so that we have a snapping point right here. And this is where I'm going to connect the 45 degree beam. And then just for support, I'll have it connecting through here. And then I can delete these two. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then we'll remove those. All right. So this is gonna set us up nicely to have just like a one meter overhang to our roof. From here, what we're gonna do is just connect these. So we'll build these up, continuing with the 45 degree beams. And then on top, we're gonna place a 45 degree cross beam first. But this is just to use as a snapping point so we can fill in the last of the 45 degree beams and then remove it later so there's nothing at the top. And this is because I have a specific plan for an adornment that's going to go up here at the top and I don't want the crosses from the X. You might not always have to do this, it just depends on the spacing between the sections, but if you do have to wiggle in some extra pieces there, it's just an easy way to do it. 
All right, so now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this technique and then just apply it to all my different faces. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so from here you see that we've applied the same technique each one of the faces that we want to establish for our roof lines. Just ensuring that we're going to have a little bit of an overhang on each side. So with our structural beams in place, step three would be to just fill in our roof with the thatch roof. So we're just going to go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll use the 45 degree thatch pieces and just work our way all the way around. So the only thing to really keep an eye out for here is, so some of these middle sections here, you're gonna have to use the inverted corners just so that it transitions nicely across the different areas. Other than that, let's just go ahead and block all this. Okay, so we've filled in the roof, and one thing I did notice is that this part of the roof was a little bit weak, so I did add in a couple other supporting poles here. So just gotta keep an eye out for that when building in and filling in the roof, especially when you're not using advanced pieces like wood iron beams or something like that. But as we look all around our structure, we can see that the roof just slightly overhangs on all our sides, so a very subtle difference, but just adding that little bit of depth on your roof lines can really help your structure look a lot better. All right, awesome. So the roof in is time to establish the base layer of our walls. So this is just gonna be the basic block in of the wood walls before we add any details. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just do the same pattern all the way around. But what we're gonna do is start with a wood half wall. We're gonna have that little cross beam facing out. And then we're gonna go a full wood wall and we're gonna flip it around and have the cross beams facing inside. Just like that. And then we're gonna go back to the wood half wall and then have the beam facing out. So we're only gonna go that high, but we're gonna do the same thing all the way around just to block in a base layer. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so as you can see, we've established a base layer of walls pretty much all around the structure. So what I'm gonna do next here is just decide where I want my door and windows to go because then we can just cut out some areas. So I will remove this. This will be our door into the building. And then let's just see where we could maybe have a couple windows. Maybe we'll have Cut out some windows right here. Alright, so from here we're going to move on to the next step, which is adding your second layer, which is going to be your decorative layer. So this is actually where you can separate yourself from the more beginner level building, the more intermediate and advanced. And it's, it's all about adding layering and depth to your structure. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start with our beams. So where we laid out our beams, we're gonna establish a second layer on each side. And we're gonna do that all the way across here. Okay, so by highlighting the beams here, we see that we add a bit of depth to our structure. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight 
all the different sides of our beams for the structure. So the things you're gonna have to look out for is that on the sides that don't have the open roof face, is that if you use the snapping point, it's going to stick through the top of the roof. We don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is press shift to toggle off the snapping point and then just meticulously sink that down so that it doesn't show through. So just gotta pay attention to some of the details there. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that in all these different beams. Alright, so as we can see, we have accentuated the beams all the way around our structure. And what this now allows us to do is actually use it as a different plane and snapping point, for adding depth to our walls. So the pattern I actually like to use for this design is I'll bring across some wood half walls, just at the base layer here. And then for filling in this top section, Instead of just filling it in on the base layer, I'm going to bring it out and start building on that new set of beams that we just established. And what this will actually do is create just a subtle overhang in our wall on our faces that just looks a little bit nicer and makes our wall look a little bit more interesting, a little bit more intricate. So let's go ahead and fill this in. And then from here, what I also like to do is utilizing this beam, I'm going to toggle off snapping points again and then just halfway sink it into the wall and then bring this across. Just because I think that looks nice. And then I'm going to take the one meter wooden poles and then bring this down on each of those snapping points and on the side I'll just bring some wood beams across all right and so now this is gonna be the design that I repeat for all the open sections of my structure so when wherever the roof line opens like this I'm gonna repeat this pattern and then for the sections that are just closed off like this it's just gonna be a simple bringing the wood half walls across and then the beams across as well. So we're going to leave that very simple. And so now that we have developed two of these simple design patterns for the different faces of our wall, let's go ahead and replicate that all the way around. Alright, and so with that, you can see that by replicating this pattern on each of our faces, we've just added a little bit of depth and intrigue to the walls themselves. And it's subtle, but it does look a little bit nicer. Alright, so from here, with the structure pretty much complete, it's really just adding the decoration and adornments that you want. So, for instance, let's go ahead and add some windows here. So I'll utilize the wood doors. Uh, we gotta add in our actual door, so I'll use the wood gate. And then add things like banners. So let's go ahead 
Add some banners at the top here. Green, orange, green. And then I also like adding some shields to the side. Maybe we'll add some banded shields. Another thing that I do like to also add is at the top, I came up with this custom adornment uh, that I like better than just using the X's. So what I'll do is I'll place a one meter, one meter pole here and then just custom place them on each side there. And that'll give me some snapping points to then create this cross pattern with the dragon adornments. Slide it in there and then I can remove these. They don't move anymore. And I think that just looks, that looks nice. So a little bit of nuance in terms of how you place it, but I think that looks a little bit better than just the normal cross. So now what I'm gonna do here is just repeat this pattern on the different open faces of my wall. Okay, great. So we've just replicated some of that decorative design on all the different faces here. And it just adds a little color and makes it pop a little bit more. And then obviously I like these a little bit more than the normal crosses. Just that custom dragon adornment. All right, yeah, but with that, the build is pretty much complete. So it's a pretty modest and simplistic design, but enough detail to make it pop and separate it from like a beginner build. So you can obviously add other landscaping decorations and things like that, but I like to keep it kind of modest as it is an early to mid game design, but hopefully by following along, you all are able to implement this into your own projects. But if you found this helpful, please make sure you like and subscribe. I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.